just arrived in the accommodation in Plymouth. It was like a four, four and a bit hour coach ride here. But um, I just unpacked and it's really, really fancy. Like, I was not expecting this at all. Like, it's really, really lovely. And I got a nice double bed and an ensuite. And the kitchen's like so fancy as well. So it's really, really nice. Um, and we have been given a little lanyard keys to get in. Um, we're meant to go shopping to just get food and stuff for tonight and the next couple of days and then tomorrow I'm going to Falmouth so I'm taking a taxi in the morning and I'm gonna go and do some habitat mapping over in Falmouth. I don't really know what that's gonna involve yet, I guess we're gonna find out. You guys know as much as I do about what I'm doing and I literally have no idea, we haven't really been told so it's all a bit of a mystery, but um, it's quite exciting, and yeah, I'll take you along with me so you can see. Hi guys, it is, ooh, my trainers and coat are in me. It is the next day, um, I had a really bad night's sleep because my toilet was making this like squeaky noise the whole night. Like I woke up at 4am and it was like, um, so yeah, not feeling that great today, but um, we're going to Falmouth, um, which is like an hour and a half taxi away. Um, and we're gonna do habitat mapping today. So um, yeah, I'll take you along with me and you can see what we get up to. But I feel like today is gonna be like a lot of time traveling, which is kind of annoying, but it should be fun. habitat mapping today um, in Falmouth and I'm back in Plymouth now and I thought I'd talk to you about what we got up to. I didn't get to film tons of what we were doing um, but I'll talk you through all the interesting things that I learned today because I think you guys did kind of kind of interesting too hopefully. Yeah so basically we were doing um, sonar mapping so we were mapping the seafloor environment to see if it was sandy, muddy or rocky um, and you kind of do this to determine what kind of species would be there, what kind of habitats there are um, and whether this is changing over time or if this is like a constant thing. If the habitat is sandy this can mean that it can be mobile so sand can be moved by either the waves or the tides and you can get different ripple patterns um, on the sea floor depending on if it's been moved by the tides or if it's been moved by the waves. If it's been moved by the tides it will kind of create this shape where all the sand is kind of piled up on one side and then if it's been moved by the waves it will be a symmetrical this shape. Um, because the sand is just moving back and forth. Also, the influence of the waves can be dependent on how deep the water is, so you can basically use an equation to work out the distance, so your wavelength, so the distance between your two crests of your wave, and then you can divide that by two, and that will be the depth of influence that your waves have on sediment. So if you have a 10 meter wavelength, it will only affect sediment up to like a five meter depth. So if you have like a 15 meter depth, seabed then it won't be influenced at all by the waves. We also got to learn about, I don't know if you guys have seen, but there's this clip in Blue Planet 2 where there is a kind of salt lake in the sea. So it's this big density change between um, your kind of normal seawater and then like a really, really uh, dense salty lake under the sea. And there's like this video of like eels coming in and out of the salt water um, and basically we, I'll put it up on here what um, that would look like on a sonar but it'll basically be like a black hole because the uh, sonar 
will get diffracted so much because of the density differences that it doesn't return back um, to the detector. So it just appears as this like massive black hole, which is quite cool. We also got to um, see this cool thing where they were using this kind of data on Mars to determine like what the surface of Mars was like and they got this picture back which obviously caused a lot of panic because this was in the 1970s when um, we were kind of exploring and they found like a face on Mars and obviously that was like aliens or something um, but it turns out that on closer inspection it was actually just like a clump of rocks um, and it was all due, due to the, like the lighting uh, at the time that made it look like a face and um, so that was kind of interesting as well because when there are objects um, on the seabed they appear on the sonar but they also cast like a shadow behind them where you can't really see what's there um, so yeah lots of really interesting things like that um, we also got to learn about uh, the kind of biology of the area and there is a species called marl which is there and I'll put a picture up on the screen here but um, it's basically like a calcifying algae um, and it takes calcium carbonate from the water and builds this exoskeleton um, which is really really interesting um, and we found loads of that we did some sediment cores as well um, and yeah it was a really really good day on the boat we learnt lots, it was very hands on, um, and yeah, it was exciting. <laughs> um, tomorrow, we are doing some stuff in the estuaries around Plymouth, so you'll get to come along and see what we do then as well. Um, but for now, I'm gonna chill out, I think, this evening. <laughs> so I'll see you guys tomorrow. hair right now oh, it is mad but um yesterday we went up the estuary and we did loads and loads of ctd measurements and data collection with that so we were looking at temperature salinity depth density nutrients and chlorophyll and uh, i was in the wet lab so i was doing like all of the uh, samples we were filtering a lot of the seawater to <clears throat> test for chlorophyll concentration and then we were also storing samples so we could analyze them later for like uh, phosphate, nitrate and like silicon and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah that was really good fun and then today, what are we doing today? <laughs> today we are going offshore so we're going to be really really far out off the coast and I think we're going to be doing a similar thing, I'm not too sure yet, we haven't really been told. Um, but it's super early in the morning <clears throat> and then we're actually leaving today as well so it's going to be a really really busy day, really long and really full on. <laughs> Hello, I am back 
from the boat. Again, even more wild hair this time from the wind, but oh my goodness, <laughs> it was such an epic fail because I ended up getting really seasick because <laughs> it was really choppy at the beginning. Um, so I was literally really, really seasick uh, over the side. So obviously I couldn't really contribute massively to all of the science, um, but we, we managed to find some shelter in the bay way closer into the shore um, where it wasn't as choppy and we did manage to get loads and loads of CT eats done um, and we're looking about the structure of the ocean so your thermoclines and halocline so your differences in temperature from the surface to depth and then the difference in like salinity from the surface to the depth um, and things like that and that also creates like a pycnocline which is like your differences in density um, throughout your water column and how this is affecting the biology so how this affects the distribution of nutrients whether it's a really mixed water column where nutrients are distributed really evenly throughout or whether nutrients are stuck at the surface um, and then this also determines like where you find your phytoplankton and your zooplankton so your phytoplankton need light because they need to photosynthesize, but they also need nutrients for them to be able to grow and bloom. So it's this balance between finding an area where there is enough light, but also enough nutrients. Um, and that's all to do with the structuring of the water column, the seasonal time of the year um, and everything like that. So that was really interesting. And we're going to get um, all of the data back from that. Uh, later on in the year to write a big report and project that was what this whole trip was about we were collecting data which we're going to use for next year to do a big project and write up on um, so it's been good to have like an intense time period to just kind of bash it all out really um, and we're really lucky to have been able to come because of covid um, because normally we would be here for like 10 days my whole year group would be here be loads of us and uh yeah it would be a lot more than what we got to do we were only here for like three days and i'm in a group of um five people so it's a lot more limited but again we're just really grateful that we even managed to get out and experience everything um so yeah thank you guys for coming along on the field course with me um it's been really fun like sharing these kind of things with you and i hope they give you a bit more of an insight into what you could possibly be doing if you're doing a marine biology course or if you're thinking about it or you're just curious um but yeah so thank you guys for coming along sorry if the footage was terrible and like it's probably all disjointed and all over the place but hopefully it'll kind of make sense <laughs> see you guys in the next one bye